In the last lesson, we summarized our argument as follows. So at this point, we're ready to find some flaws. To do this, we'll need some extra room, so let's move our summary off to the side. Now, as we look for flaws, please note that according to the GRE test makers, our task is to discuss the logical soundness of the author's case by critically examining the line of reasoning and the use of evidence. In other words, we're looking for points that determine whether or not the author's conclusion follows from the given premises. So when we look for flaws, we must not question the truth of the evidence. For example, in this argument, we cannot question the fact that magazines use more color photographs than black and white photographs. We must assume that this information is true and look for problems with the conclusion the author makes based on this information. All right, so with this in mind, let's look for some flaws. Well, to begin, although the author does not supply any specific numbers, there is an informal statistical argument going on here. Notice that the author uses the incidence of color photography in magazines, newspapers, and portrait studios to make a conclusion about the entire market for color photography. Now, when it comes to any statistical argument, we should determine whether or not the sample accurately represents the entire population. So in this example, is the demand for color photographs among magazines, newspapers, and portrait studios representative of the overall demand for color photographs? Well, since photographs are also used in books, journals, packaging, catalogs, billboards, and websites to name a few, it's possible that the sample the author uses does not accurately represent the overall demand for color photos. So this is one flaw. What are some other ones? Well, another flaw is the ambiguous words the author uses in the argument. For example, the author prefaces the argument by stating that the following information is important to photographers who wish to be successful. But this word can have different meanings for different people. For example, if by success the author means artistic recognition, then it's quite possible that photographers working in black and white have an advantage over those working in color. If on the other hand, success means strictly financial gains, then that could mean something else. Since we do not have a clear reason to accept one definition over another, it's difficult to draw a reasonable conclusion. Similarly, the author states that of the thousands of newspapers across the world, many are starting to use color photographs. But what does the word many mean here? For example, many could mean five or six, in which case there is little reason to believe that working in color is a good idea. Since this and other terms are so ambiguous, we can't use this information to draw a reasonable conclusion. Now, another flaw in this argument is related to supply and demand. The author suggests that since there appears to be a high demand for color photographs, it can be concluded that photographers will be successful if they work in color. But what about the supply side of this argument? How many photographers are working in color? If there are millions of photographers already working in color, then the competition might make it very difficult to be successful working in color. Conversely, if there are very few photographers working in black and white, then a photographer working in black and white might be very successful even if the demand for black and white photographs is not as great as the demand for color photographs. Since the author does not provide any information about the supply of photographers working in color and in black and white, it's impossible to determine whether or not working in color will be as advantageous as the author concludes. Another flaw in the argument is here, where the author notes that there are more types of color film than black and white film available. Here, the author assumes that in order to be successful, photographers require several different types of film, but there's no reason to believe this. Furthermore, even if it were true that photographers do require several different types of film to be successful, all we are told is that there are more types of color film than black and white film. There is no reason to believe that the supply of black and white film is not already sufficient. In fact, given the vagueness of the word more here, it's possible that there are 5,000 types of black and white film and 5,001 types of color film in which case the variety of film types has no bearing on success here. Now another flaw we could mention is that the author's conclusion is too strong. 
the author concludes that photographers who work in color have an advantage over those who work in black and white. But given the somewhat limited evidence, we can't make this conclusion with any certainty. Okay, we could go on, but at this point we already have five flaws, which is more than enough. From here, our next step is to choose two to four flaws, and for each flaw, we'll elaborate on the following areas. So here are the flaws we've identified. Which ones should we work with? Well, before we decide this, we should keep in mind that the instructions for this particular prompt fall under the category of assumptions and roles. So which of these flaws are best suited to an essay with an emphasis on assumptions? Well, I happen to like these three, so let's use them. Now for each of these flaws, we're going to look for some discussion points based on some of these tasks. Now since the given instructions direct us to focus on assumptions, we'll devote more energy on these tasks and examine the others only occasionally. If the instructions were from a different category, then our emphasis would be on different tasks. Alright, so let's begin with the flaw that the sample of photograph consumers mentioned in the argument may not represent the entire market. The underlying assumption here is that the sample is representative. This assumption is faulty because only three types of consumers are mentioned when many other consumers exist. Now the next task here isn't really applicable to this flaw, so we'll ignore it. Finally, when it comes to extra information needed, it would be useful to know the statistics concerning all consumers of photographs. Okay, at this point, we'll follow the same steps for the next flaw. Here the underlying assumptions are that the word success is equal to money, many equals most, and more equals significantly more. These assumptions are faulty because these words can have many different interpretations. Now, Of the two remaining tasks, let's address this one. To help us evaluate the argument, the author needs to define these words. Finally, for the last flaw, the underlying assumption is that the supply of photographers working in color is not sufficient. Related to this is the assumption that the supply of photographers working in black and white is sufficient. These assumptions are faulty because there are several possible scenarios involving the number of photographers working in either field. Finally, to help us evaluate the argument, we really need to know the supply of photographers in each field. Okay, at this point we have enough discussion points to write our essay. We'll cover this in the next lesson.